Hello everyone, I am Mahati Anand from LMU Munich and today along with my colleague Vishnu Murli from CU Boulder, we would like to present our work on K-inductive barrier certificates for stochastic systems where we propose to utilize K-induction in order to improve significantly the search for barrier certificates in order to provide safety and reachability verification. So we should also mention that as professors Ashutosh Trivedi and Majid Zamani of CU Boulder are also collaborators in this work. So let us begin by looking at a discrete time stochastic system, which is basically defined over its state set X, a sequence of random variables y sigma, and a function f, which describes state evolution in such a way that at any point of time, we have the current state to be x of t, and the noise acting on the system is y sigma of t, and the next state at time t plus 1 is nothing but the function f applied over to the current state and the noise. And since the noise value is taken at random from a given initial condition, multiple sequences are possible and these state sequences are known as solution processes. So for such a system, we would like to provide safety and reachability verification. But what exactly does this entail? Let's consider this figure over here where X0 represents the predefined set of initial conditions from which the solution processes may begin. And then we have these states sets in red to be the unsafe states or the bad states of the system that we would like the solution processes to avoid. Finally, we have this region in green to be the good states or the target states of the system such that the solution processes should be visiting these target states eventually. So basically verifying the safety would be to ensure that the solution processes are avoiding these unsafe regions and verifying reachability would mean to ensure that the solution processes eventually reach these target states over a period of time. But since we are dealing with stochastic systems, some solution processes may violate these specifications and we would like to look at uh, the verification problem in a probabilistic sense rather than providing absolute guarantees. So basically for a safety verification problem, we would like to compute the minimum probability with which the solution processes do not visit the unsafe regions given that they start from an initial set of states. And then a reachability verification problem would be to again compute the minimum probability with which the solution processes do in fact reach the target states starting from the initial set of states. So one way to provide these verification guarantees would be to use induction. So proving a property P by induction is like the climbing stairs step by step. First, we begin by proving that the property is in fact true at the first time instant. Then we use this fact to prove that it is also true at the next time instant when t is equal to one. And we use this information again to prove that it is also true at t is equal to two and so on until we arrive with the fact that the property is in fact true for all time instances. So we see that in software verification, Induction has been used to compute inductive invariant properties of the systems, as is the case for computing inductive expectation invariance in the case of stochastic systems. So we now move on to K induction, which basically helps us prove these properties in an easier fashion. But how exactly does this happen? In this case, we ensure that the property is true not only at the first time instant, but also for the first k time instances beginning from t is equal to zero. And then we use this information that we have, have about k consecutive time steps to also prove that the property is true at t plus for, I mean, at k plus first time instant. So this is basically like jumping up the stairs k steps at a time. But here, we actually have more information to work with since we know that the property is true for first k time instances. 
This gives us more information to actually infer about the K plus first time instinct, which makes it more flexible and the property becomes easier to prove. So we now see how we can utilize induction and K induction to provide guarantees for safety. So we look at barrier certificates as inductive counterparts. And in this case, barrier certificates are basically real, non-negative real valued functions defined over the states of the system. So let's look at this figure over here where these parallelograms represent singular values of the barrier certificate. So these are basically level sets for the barrier certificate. And then we have the initial sets in blue and the unsafe set states in red. So we first ensure that when the system begins in an initial set, the value of the barrier certificate is less than or equal to epsilon. And then in the unsafe set, we ensure that the value of the barrier certificate is greater than or equal to one. Finally, we ensure that after every time instant, the expected value, note that we use the expected value here because the because stochasticity barrier certificates may take multiple values at the next time instant but we only look at the average value that it takes and we ensure that this expected value is non-increasing after every time instant so this basically allows us to separate the initial and the unsafe states in such a way that the barrier certificate does not cross this unsafe states reason with some prop probability and therefore the system remains safe with that probability. So now let's look at the definition of barrier certificates formally and barrier certificates are required to satisfy something called as a super martingale property which is basically this condition that the expected value must be non-increasing after every time step. If this super martingale property is being satisfied, then we can say that the probability for not reaching unsafe regions is at least one minus epsilon, where epsilon comes from the initial condition of the barrier certificate. So now we see that these barrier certificates, although they provide a nice approach for safety verification, they have some limitations. And even if we know that a system is safe, sometimes we cannot find a barrier certificate. We can look at this Markov chain as an example where we know that the prob with probability 0.99, the system is safe. But if you look for a linear barrier certificate, we cannot find it as the expectation is increasing after every time step. And therefore, we end up with a trivial probability of satisfaction. So in order to enlarge the class of barrier certificates that are suitable for verifying safety, we move to K induction and provide K inductive barrier certificates, which again are less than or equal to epsilon at the initial states and are greater than or equal to one at the unsafe states. But here, instead of asking for the expected value to decrease, we allow the expected value to increase by a small value after every time instant, but under the condition that after k time steps, the expected value again becomes non-increasing from the first time instant. So this once again allows us to separate the initial and the unsafe states in such a way that the system satisfies safety with some probability. So formally, again, a barrier, K inductive barrier certificate is a non-negative real valued function that satisfies these two conditions as in the previous case. But over here, we allow the expected value to increase by a small value of C, but after K time steps, it has to become non-increasing again. And if such a condition holds, then the probability for not reaching unsafe regions is given by this value here, where k epsilon and c come from these conditions. And note that when k is equal to one, we recover the original barrier certificate conditions. So we now illustrate with the help of that Markov chain example we considered before, that we in fact find a linear barrier certificate in this case, which provides us a probability of safety to be at least 0.79, which is significantly better than the one that we obtained before. So we also illustrate our approach with a simple RLC circuit, which 
requires to satisfy some safety property given by these sets over here. And in this case as well, no standard barrier certificate exists, but a K-inductive barrier certificate exists that provides us with a probability of safety to be at least 0.94. Note that over here to compute barrier certificates, we use the sum of squares optimization method. So this brings an end to the safety verification problem. And now I'll let Vishnu to take over to explain the reachability verification problem. Thank you, Mahati. Similar to how one can use barrier certificates to give guarantees on safety, one may also use barrier certificates to give guarantees on reachability. To illustrate this point, let's consider the following figure. Consider this region in red to indicate the boundary set of the state space, the region in green, the target set, and the region in blue to, to indicate the initial set. When we say that the function B from the state space of the system to the set of non-negative reals is a bias certificate, if you have the value of the barrier in the initial states to be less than or equal to epsilon, the value of the barrier in the boundary to be greater than or equal to one. And we have that the expected value of the barrier to be decreasing at every point, which is not in the target set, but inside the state set. Intuitively, the idea is starting from the initial, initial states, the expected value keeps decreasing. And so we eventually converge to a point, which is in the target set. More formally, firstly, we should note that the bias certificates for reachability require a stronger super martingale condition than those of safety. We define a function B from the state space of the system to the set of non-negative reals to be a bias certificate for reachability if the value of the barrier in the initial states is less than or equal to epsilon, the value of the barrier in the boundary is greater than or equal to one, and the expected value of the barrier at the next time step is less than or equal to minus delta plus the current value of the barrier for all the states in the closure of the state set, not including the target region. These three conditions together give a probabilistic bound of reaching the target region from the initial states. However, there are some limitations to consider. In particular, let's consider the following Markov chain. While it is in fact possible for the system starting from the initial state to reach the target st state with a probability of one, we cannot, for example, find a linear bias certificate that gives a guarantee of reachability. And so we get a trivial bound of zero of reachability. We thus once again, recourse to K induction and the idea of K inductive bias certificates for reachability. Informally, we consider k inductive bias certificates for reachability as follows. Similar to standard bias certificates for reachability, we have the value of the barrier in the initial region to be less than or equal to epsilon, and the value of the barrier at the boundary to be greater than or equal to one. We allow the expected value of the barrier to increase by a bounded amount. However, we require that in k steps, this expected value should be decreasing. And these once again, give a probabilistic guarantee of reachability. Formally, we say that a function B from the state space of the system to the set of non-negative reals is a K-inductive barrier certificate. If the value of the barrier in the initial states is less than or equal to epsilon, the value of the barrier is greater than or equal to one in the boundary of the state set, and the expected value of the barrier can increase by a value C at the next time step for every state of the system. However, the expected value of the barrier in K steps should decrease by at least a value of minus delta with delta being some positive value, of course. And so these four guarantees together, once again, gives a probabilistic guarantee of reachability. Going back to our finite Markov chain example, we are able to find a linear K inductive barrier for a value of K equals three. And thus we're able to achieve a probability of reachability of at least 0.85 using a linear K inductive bias certificate. As a case study, we consider a room temperature model whose dynamics are specified, constants are as noted below, with the initial state, the initial set, the state set, and the target set as denoted. And we note that we are able to find a bias certificate of degree two, which gives a probability of reachability of at least 0.76. However, we are able to use two induction and two inductive bias certificates to give a probability of reachability of more than 0.89. This is because the value of epsilon you can consider for K inductive bias certificates in this case is smaller than the value of epsilon you consider in the case of standard bias certificates, and so we are able to get a higher probability. In conclusion, we discussed some of the limitations of standard bias certificates. We have proposed the notions of k-inductive bias certificates to alleviate some of these issues, and we illustrated with the help of some simple examples the benefits of using these k-inductive bias certificates. We'd like to thank the GFG and NSF for their funding. 
Thank you for your time and attention. We look forward to your questions.